will call us to order at 6.02 p.m. This is Capital Planning Committee um, meeting. We'll do a uh, visual roll call. I'm Anna Crane. I'm the chair. Eloise Salls. And John. John's here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Present. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so as always, I think first thing on our agenda is just to uh, discuss the minutes that Eloise sent around. I thought they looked lovely. Oh. Um, my only question was about the um, bucket truck and chipper. If I remember correctly, they were two separate items and the bucket truck had one price on it of somewhere in the hundred thousand dollar range, and then the chipper was the eighty thousand dollar item. I think the bucket truck was two hundred thousand, and then the chipper was eighty thousand. Yes. And the other thing I didn't put in, which I knew I didn't, was I couldn't read my notes to put in Margaret's breakdown of what funds we had to work with. <sighs> And I wanted to look at it online, the the, um, the recording, but I couldn't find that. Hmm. When, when it okay. just doesn't work, it doesn't work. No, <laughs> believe me, I know that. Um, oh, I wish I could share my screen. That might be, I could share my screen, but that might be asking a little much. Um, the, uh, so, so the five-year capital plan that is in your Google Drive, at the bottom of um, the FY22 request worksheet, it shows a breakdown of, um, of available uh, public safety mitigation, which is about $300,000 because my hope was that we could um, hold back on spending it all this year. We had talked about maybe splitting the ambulance cost over two years, maybe starting a public safety um, a public safety stabilization fund. Um, and we also don't know whether or not Highland Commons or anyone else for that matter could end up coming back to the town and asking to renegotiate agreements. Um, we're having trouble as it is trying to collect on one of the agreements. So um, it was about $300,000. The free cash based on the finance committee's use of free cash guidelines yeah. was I believe, I believe that was a little over 500,000. And then um, the other category that's on that sheet, um, NA or, or um, unknown, I think it is. Um, it, it's, um, I put uh, Chief Galvin's cost for the radio system upgrades under that category because that is actually a, um, a, a donation. donation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, frankly, I don't know if um, Berlin Memorial School has $65,000 in requests too, which would also come from free cash. Um, so there's a heavy demand on use of free cash with the, um, with the building requests and highway and Berlin Memorial. Um, uh, public safety mitigation shouldn't be a huge problem if the capital planning committee decides to spread that ambulance cost over two years, which, I mean, or, or do something else. Um, you know, Chief said he's amenable to that. And actually, if you looked at last year's, I think it was last year's um, breakdown of their five-year requests, um, the ambulance wasn't scheduled for replacement until 2023 anyway. Or FY23. Is, is there any ambulance money that is also available to there? There would be very, very little at the moment because it's been applied, you know, it's been applied year on year to the operating uh, budget. So um, I can double check with June when she's back next week um, and see if there's even a small amount that could be put toward it. Well, sometimes it's the symbolic value. That's uh, exactly, that's true. Wouldn't it be nice to have a self self sustaining ambulance service? Well, that's but. that was what, some of the stuff that we were, you know, talking about. I'm talking like eight years ago. Yeah, I, I 
also thought that this ambulance that we're replacing, we we replaced already, but somehow ended up keeping. So now we have two ambulances. Two. Yeah. Of, they, they, that happens with any department that has wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. We're trying to slow that one down a bit. <laughs> I mean, I, I, this happened when I was a selectman yeah. in the in the 80s. This is not a new phenomena. It, it, it's just a little ironic to replace an ambulance that we already replaced. That oh. I thought might have been traded in. Mm. Uh, so this is the 09. I was looking at the asset inventory today, um, and it looks like the, if if Chief is saying this is 10 years old, it has to be the 09 that they're looking to replace, which is a little more than 10 years old, I think. Yeah, but where did the 10 years number come from? Uh, 10 year replacement. I think Chief said that 10 as years. As opposed to 12 years or. Mm -hmm. Like who determines that? Yeah. It's it's a good question. On the asset inventory, it shows a 10 year lifespan on the ambulance and they probably determine that based on wear and tear usage and things like that. Um, but chief, you know, chief stated in his capital request that 10 years is about um, the lifespan of an ambulance. So um, I don't know if there's anything scientific behind it, but I'm just, Look okay to me. I don't know, but I am mm. not looking uh, underneath or rust and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do we really need it. That's the question. I'm just feeling burdened. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of other things to think about, I suppose. And the roofs. The roofs. Uh, yeah. Now the yeah. roofs. That could bring that up to them. Yeah. So. Uh, Dave is going to uh, the inspection, the roof inspection for the town offices is going to happen this Thursday. It's scheduled for this Thursday. And from that uh, inspection will come an estimate on the roof replacement. Um, so the, another thing that puzzled me was there have been a couple of roof repairs at the public safety side of the building um, in the last 20 years since the roof was replaced and, you know, to the tune of, a, um, uh, you know, uh, more than right, 20. Right so. over the dis right over the roof, right over the dispatch. Okay. So those happen. I can't see that there's been a significant amount of money spent on roof patching over the town offices, but that said, El Eloise brought up a good point that there was previously a request um, that hasn't resurfaced since I got here, but I, I know it existed in the past, um, to build out the, um, the second level of the public safety complex building so that there could be sleeping quarters for, um, you know, for firefighter EMTs, in which case that could um, affect the whole roof project. Is that, is that what the thinking was, Eloise? Yes, I didn't want to fix the roof and then find out five years later that, oh, we got to rip it up because we're going to put in a dormer. Right, right. That was maybe um, 2017. They were talking about getting monies to have someone come in and look at the feasibility of designing that space. As Initially, I thought the space was designed with that. And then it got taken out because of cost. Mm. Now it's coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, the question, I, I didn't want to repair a roof and then ha have yeah, to that mm -hmm. makes sense. Like fixing yeah. a road and then ripping it up to put in the water mains. Right, right. Yeah. So I wonder then if that's what they were referring to when they submitted last year, they submitted a capital spending requirements plan for the next, looks like it was 10, 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and they showed public safety building maintenance and upgrades, um, which in 2021 would have started with $120,000 and another 120 in 22 and then 125 in 23. 
and 125 and 24. So that has to be what they're referring to here. But it wasn't requested. Right. So what I think what the Capital Planning Committee needs is clarification from Chief that, or Dave or somebody, that doing a roof job at the public safety complex is not going to have to be undone if and when those the addition or modifications are done. Have we heard, I haven't heard anything in a few years about um, developing a full-time fire uh, department that's not volunteer. Have, have we? Moved? We've moved to per diem. And I think the desire long-term is to have a full-time fire EMS department um, and um, advance and, and um, increase the services to ALS level services. But that's not going to happen for a few years because it's going to take a lot of money operationally, not just, no, not just for capital. I mean, operationally, it's going to be a huge um, increase in costs. So what Chief had wanted to do this year, and I agreed, is to get someone in and get a consultant in to study what the actual costs would be to increase to an ALS level service. And once we have a handle on that, um, you know, decisions could be made um, based on that information. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the first step in really determining how much it's going to cost. Uh, now, the I other thing, yeah. can I, I make a step back? Do we really need that kind of service in this town? That's uh, that should be part of the study. Absolutely. Right. And okay. if we do, is there any opportunity to do it regionally or do I, some other way to, to yeah. make it work? Yeah. Okay. But when you get this information, it has to be, you have to aggravate people by posting it all around. Mm -hmm. A lot of times stuff is done and I know where it is because I work in the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But John Q. Public has no clue. And you, you can explain it to the selectmen. That's the ideal time, one of them, to do it. Yeah. Explain to the selectmen and then keep showing you can go back and this is where it's located. So people, it's, it starts to permeate their brain. Mm. I'm learning, I'm learning um, that different ways to broaden communication. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might be a little, I, mean, I might be a little old fashioned. So I, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you can bring it up at a coffee talk. Yep. Can bring it up when you talk to the selectmen. Yeah. Um, you can ask other boards to chip in, particularly like the planning board. How does this impact their version of a master plan? Mm -hmm. It's just that you have to talk about it. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. other people come up with a better idea than what I had in the, the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's a good idea is a good idea. I don't care who presents it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a really good point uh, because before it ever goes to a town meeting, for the consulting piece of it anyway, um, to give folks a sense that this is what's being studied. Now, back to the, back to the ambulance replacement, which is kind of connected to this. Um, <laughs> We're having difficulty, uh, well, we're having challenges um, collecting the first um, transitional public safety mitigation payment from Riverbridge. Um, and that could go a long way to helping fund this ambulance replacement. If we're just, and that's a, you know, that's a temporary um, mitigation payment over five years. So it would be ideal for something like a capital purchase um, rather than putting it toward operating. But we're having trouble, um, we're having challenges um, yeah. collecting. Well, just I think we're gonna have, gonna have with... challenges all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, with I... unemployment expiring, with, <coughs> uh, I just, I think financially, if we can squeak out without a recession, we'll be grateful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Margaret, 
why, why do you have trouble with the river bridge getting any money from them? Well, <laughs> Just me. I, know I really can't. I really can't. I, I, I can't. I can't obviously speak for them, but I get the sense that, you know, there were some infrastructure type things that had to happen down at Riverbridge, um, water uh, service and um, and septic that had to be put in and it was extremely costly and it was a cost that they didn't anticipate when they were planning the development and so my understanding is that has set them back significantly um well yeah but why are we taking the uh, beating on that and that's private business i know you and, and that's exactly and that's the question john and, that's what we're asking i thought that also was known by the time the apartment complex was built like that's why the original mixed use village wasn't built is because of the if it if it had been built in 2008 when it was you know first discussed it probably would have mm. and with delays and then they had the problem of which comes first the banks wouldn't give them a loan for anything until they solved the septic and the water mm. so finally they had to bring they initially were going to own the apartments but they turned around and initially i believe sold their liquor license and that gave them the money to do the water mm -hmm. and yeah. you know something has to come first i, I remember on one of the uh, town hall meetings we gave them a break for fifty thousand dollars was it once or twice? Mm -hmm. I don't remember now. You know, they're getting too many breaks from us. Uh, <laughs> we should... Well, if everybody else was flush in the nation, I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. We still um, have the land. We do. Um, and we also have a development agreement. I mean, you know, I, I have to represent the town and in representing the town, we have an executed development agreement where there is a financial obligation in there that was known for several years before it became mm -hmm. due. Exactly. And so, yeah. And so it's incumbent upon us to, to try to pursue that payment. So that's what we're trying, that's what we're trying to do. I'm just trying to give you the background. I, I appreciate that. You don't that. have really a background. Okay. No, no. You know, and I don't want you to get, uh, what is that, with quicksand? I don't want you to get <laughs> caught in it. I don't want to get caught in it And either. so they, they ended up having to sell off little pieces of the project. Mm -hmm when they made this agreement, they were going to own it 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like they had in order to do the housing, the Rockwell is the major player there and they're a minor player. Okay. And this, I believe uh, the same happened with the hotel. We hope to hear something. Um, we hope to hear a response from the principals of Riverbridge the week of January 4th. So that's oh, what good. we've been told. We hope okay, to hear so something. Close enough. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what we're going to hear, but we hope we're, we expect to hear mm -hmm. something. <laughs> You're going to hear we have no money. So, <laughs> yeah. What I want to Okay. So, I, I did a little, um, uh, la at your last meeting, you talked about um, a used pickup for the car two replacement. And I don't know, I, is everybody is everybody clear on the whole car two replacement at this point? John, you were talking about the SUV. Right. Okay, yeah, so that's the- Well, when I met with Chief, he, he talked about that he will need uh, SUV replacement. That's mm -hmm. his car that he drives. And then I saw it, it's on the 2023 wish list. Yeah, I, I was wrong. Okay, okay. It did appear last year. That's interesting because it did appear last year. It was presented to oh, Capital yeah. okay. last year and it came off this year. 
Um, but as far as the pickup, um, I think Eloise had asked about whether it's possible to buy a used pickup. Now, um, and, and Chief said he had gotten the um, he had gotten the price on this on this Chevy pickup off of state bid, so it would be a new pickup. Um, I did a little digging today. I, I think you could buy a really good quality, low mileage, you know, newer model the one year. that's like at least two years old. Yeah, so you could probably do that for about thirty thousand, and um, I guess. I, yeah, you could probably do that for about 30000 And as far as procurement, I thought more about it after the meeting. And I thought, okay, if the town appropriated, so what would have to happen? Here's the order. You'd have to appropriate a sum of money that you think could cover the used vehicle. We could prepare um, a request for proposals pretty quickly um, because we would, we would know what, you know, what we'd need the mileage to be at and, you know, what year range we'd want and what, you know, what other features of the vehicle we'd want. So we could pre prepare that ahead of time. And I really do think that if you sent it to reputable dealers, you could probably get responses within a couple of weeks. So I don't think mm -hmm. if it was prepared ahead of time, I, I don't think there would be a significant delay in getting a used vehicle. You would just need the appropriation and you'd have to go through the bid process properly. I, I think the one... Uh, the truck that he's uh, asking to replace is not operational right now, is it? I don't think so. No. 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 So if it's a month or two delayed, I don't think he's going to miss it. Anymore. It doesn't matter because they're not using it anyway. Right. Yeah, that's right. I think for me, one of my biggest issues with this request is the quote that he got from the dealer. If I'm looking at it, I'm going to see. Uh, oh, it's a different quote than last year. So it's a very similar quote than last year, although it is a it is a different one um, because the truck itself is only thirty five thousand dollars. It's the but that's the, pretty much the, normal. Yeah. The tinted glass, the chrome bumpers, the machined aluminum wheels, <laughs> the the. The plow, the underbody skid plate, um, the spray and bed liner, that adds another 5000 And then he has $8,000 in lighting, radios, console, a tonneau cover, lettering. Um, so there's a lot of accessories on this $35,000 truck. Does the current truck have all that? No. Current truck, no. I don't think so. No. It's just okay. I rest my case. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the primary, I thought the primary <laughs> function too on the pickup, which and I which I think is really practical, <laughs> is that they could haul their contaminated gear mm -hmm. after a fire. They could put it in the back of a pickup. Um so that would be the functional piece. So I guess if you know, there are some things that you need. I, Margaret, wasn't there talk when we talked about this last year about um, Is that your puppy? Is that your puppy? The puppy's totally going crazy. <laughs> um, but there was talk last year about a trailer uh, that they could haul their gear in or they had been hauling their gear in. Oh. Uh, okay. Sorry. They do and they do have a trailer. Good they do point. have a trailer. They have a couple of trailers, I think. Right? Um that would yeah i'd have to ask i'd have to ask that question um about the Good about point. the trailer but yeah. that would I, I i would think that would be an option chief would probably have a better explanation as to why or why you know why not um why or why that wouldn't work um so um i don't know um I don't know. Maybe this is just a for tonight. Maybe this is just a discussion, <laughs> and I can bring back I can bring back questions to the chief to ask, um, you know, to ask for follow up. Um, what about the additional brush truck? Um, and that's the military. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to change the subject. If you want to continue talking about the car two replacement. Yeah. He talked about nice to have. 
don't know, what can we do with forest fires? Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough, I, I know. Uh, I think about it in terms of oh, yeah. another vehicle. <laughs> it's not a replacement. It's an additional, additional, it's an additional yeah. vehicle, but it's not a it's not a real road vehicle. It's really an off road vehicle. Right. I just wish there was some way that there could be a combination um, on road, off road brush truck. <laughs> yes. Well, I thought we already had something for <clears throat> the road. Right. I'm also curious, Eloise, how many brush fires do we have in town? Do, mm -hmm. Have we ever had a forest fire? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Did? Yeah. Remember that? Uh, it was, I don't know, five, eight years ago. And, yeah. and you know where um, Sawyer's is on Linden Street? Yes. And it went up all, all the back there and it went over by the tracks and it was behind Barry Egger's house. Mm. Finally stopped. I think they had uh, fire trucks from like five or six towns. Wow. Oh, oh that was uh, Skip Sawyer's uh, yeah. tire pile. That yep. A lot of fire. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, what he did say which I feel is accurate is we do have a lot of woods and it is in a drought. We do, yes. So, you know, I, I don't belittle it. I'm just, that would be a secondary thing that I would like. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, not, ad, I'm not adverse to it, mm -hmm. but um, I believe Berlin Memorial also asked for a roof repair. Yes. A roof. Now, Berlin Memorial, they get to ask for whatever they want, and we just have to um, accommodate them. Well, last year we had to, I don't want to say negotiate, last year we had to talk with them when COVID hit, and they did defer um, a couple of things. They ended up paying for one of those things from existing operating funds that they had. So one of the things was taken care of within their budget and that was the basketball court. So they were able to resurface that on their own without needing town funds. Um, and, you know, they're not asking, they're not asking for um, the roof replacement this year. They're asking for a building. Oh, a building. Some sort that, of study. Yes. Uh, it's a, a building condition study and it's a pretty expensive one. I mean, they want $35,000 as a placeholder um, from Berlin for it. And I don't know how much they're, they're looking for Boylston from, for it. Um, and they're also, um, what is the one other thing they've got? Um, oh, the, uh, they want to do the patching of their patching and line striping of their parking lot. Yeah, so I think they're I believe our highway has a striping machine. Yeah. You asked David. I mean, we can do it. it. It would be cheaper. We're already paying the people. It's, you know, it's still our town. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then but catching. They were still asking for the uh, floor over the gym for OSHA. That was funded in the spring from prior capital funds. Yeah, but did prior... they actually do it? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> They've had plenty of time to do it, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised about OSHA issues. OSHA has been in existence for a long, long time. How did we even get to that point? Mm. Because once again, when they were building the school, they ran out of money, so they shortened the gym, I believe. That's when they made it a little narrower. They felt they could do that because it was a children's gym, as opposed to a regulation gym in the high school. And so what I, my understanding is that a um, uh, 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 a worker, a contractor was up over the gym working and I, I don't want to say fell through the ceiling, but I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure we all would have heard about that. Huh. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if he fell through the ceiling. You the it too, yeah. I thought there was, yeah, I thought there was something, something that happened there. It wasn't, I mean, obviously it wasn't serious, but uh, 
um, it called their attention to the need to fix it up. But once again, is that something that our highway can, they are incredibly talented. They are talented. Um, I'm curious to know whether they've done it too. So I can, I can certainly ask um, if that job, if that um, project is complete. I wonder what, I'm trying to think, what if, wouldn't it be good to kind of try to provide some guidelines to them that if they have a project funded, a capital project funded in a given year, to require them to complete that project mm -hmm. in that year before additional projects are requested. Well, we um, can just ask I, as a matter of when you submit your budget, give us an update of what we gave you last year. Mm -hmm. Right. And you can tell them I'm being a pain. They know <laughs> me. They will not challenge that. Uh, good point, Monica. Oh. Bring some discipline into this budgeting and spending. Yeah. <laughs> so many of our um, items now have sunset clauses, though. Did did this um, H H back thing have sunset? The gym floor and no, and I can tell it didn't, and I can tell you why. It's because the um, the Berlin Memorial School's capital assessment is now in the operating budget. So it is funded as part of the operating budget and not as a standalone capital article, hmm. um, okay. which makes it a little more difficult. I mean, maybe we can find a way to- You have no control over an assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just ask politely. <laughs> well, I've been on the school committee too. And you know, you got to be transparent with your information. Mm -hmm. And this is information I'm pretty sure the finance committee would ask. So it's not like some exotic piece of information. Mm -hmm. uh, I, on one of the uh, um, emails you sent, Margaret, Berlin is the highest, it's 22,000 per pupil. It's the highest expense. It is a, it is a high, um, what per, the hell? what's going on? What's going on is you have your central office. Okay. That's the elementary, both elementary schools pay 50% of the central office, but because Boylston elementary has a hundred more kids, they can spread that cost over a hundred more heads. We don't. So it, ends up being a higher number. Uh, we've been through this before. Something doesn't make sense. Yeah, equiv the equivalent, the kids are getting a private school education and I'm not sure that we get private school results. <laughs> yeah. Really? And, and what, once I looked at it quickly, the ratio of students versus uh, school department employees, it's ridiculous. Mm. Somebody really has to hammer them to say, hey, what's going on here? Yeah. $22 yeah. per pupil, that's ridiculous. You're going to go integrate the whole village with that. Thing. <laughs> the way I went to school, but that's a different story. <laughs> 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 Those ways, snowstorms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, my husband went in a one school classroom up in Vermont. Did he go in West Glover? My cousin still teaches in a one room schoolhouse in West wow. Glover, Vermont. No, that was up in uh, Kirby. No. And, you know, they had outhouses and <laughs> the teacher would put soup on the stove in the morning. Everybody contributed something and then they'd have soup for lunch. Nice. There you go. Well, I went to parochial school. And <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> Very different. You went to St. Mary's? I went to Sacred Heart and uh, oh, okay. Sacred Heart and then it turned into Milford Catholic Elementary. Yes. Sure. Yeah, it was a nice, nice. The nuns were nice. So anyway, back to Capitol. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so brush truck, I think, is where we got distracted. Yes, we have forest fires. Um, 
I guess my feeling is I like the idea of the truck. Um, and I like the fact that Chief organized it to save us as much money as possible. But I'm not sure at this point in time in the current fiscal situation that we're in that we need accessories to our collection. I agree with that, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I should, I, should, I should add too that um, the brush truck that we do have that is more designed to operate roadside um, is also going to be coming up for replacement in the not too distant future. So again, I wonder if there's an opportunity at that point to replace sure. that sure. truck with something that could be on off road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like his creative thinking though. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk about the bucket truck? <laughs> oh. Sure. Can we okay. figure out the price on the bucket truck? Um, I can't, oh, maybe I can find it here. Um. Uh, last time we mentioned a bucket truck can we buy a used truck and then add a bucket to it or some, some other thing instead of buying a brand new one we spent two hundred grand on it bucket truck Two hundred thousand dollars and chipper, yeah, and chipper sure. eighty thousand. Yeah. Again, last year when this came up, the chipper was totally fine. We wouldn't need to replace it, and now this year it's broken. So the chipper was bought in nineteen ninety six. So it's twenty five oh, years, years old. In, it's in when I became a so I, uh, a town clerk. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was still in high school. Um, <laughs> um, in 2011, there were repairs that were done to it. So even the repairs are 10 years old now. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how extensive the repairs were, but I found that on the asset inventory. It's amazing how that clues you into to the work that's been done. Mm -hmm. um, you certainly want a... Um, you certainly want a, a working wood chipper and one that's not yes. going to cause injury. And then the bucket truck, I, he's, Dave said that it's easy enough to find a used bucket truck in the 60, did he say $60,000? I thought he said $40,000 range. Oh. Yeah, you're right. When I was researching them, they have different sizes and they go up at different sizes. I do not expect them to be cutting down the tallest tree. I think we should still contract that out. It yeah, is dangerous. He said that as well. Yeah, and I, I agree. Mm -hmm. One of my concerns, and, and Dave, no, besides the whole, you know, besides the insurance and, and the liability and things is, how on earth is a highway crew going to take care of 300 problem trees? Is it going to be a tree a day? For a year? Is it going to be, I mean, how are they going to clean out the hazard trees at the numbers that a contractor could do? So in other words, Capital Planning Committee um, approved recommending $60,000 for contract tree removal that would take care of about 300 hazard trees. That would be a big chunk uh, out of the number of hazard trees in town. So that would take away a large portion of that. But if the town decides instead to go with a bucket truck and wood chipper, that means the highway department is almost fully responsible. It's not gonna be able to do things like in emergency situations, mm -hmm. but it's going to be primarily responsible for cleaning up the hundreds of hazard trees. And I, I just don't know how quickly that could happen. I don't know, I found it interesting when we had our uh, discussion with CMRCP, they were talking 200 trees and yet in the same conversation he was having with us, it was like 800. Mm. 800 trees. 900, yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah about, I'm... The, uh, about every tree, tree needs a bucket to go and cut it that way. So you can just mm. cut it. Yeah drop it in the woods, you know. so what's wrong with that, I don't know. Is there a happy medium here where there could be yeah. some money funded for contract tree removal to take care of a good chunk of them? Well, and then 
buy a used bucket truck to continue I, the maintenance? Maybe to take, uh, if we do face great financial pressure in May, maybe give him enough that he can rent, rent it or lease it. I looked, mm -hmm. they lease them by the week or by the month. Oh yeah, you asked him about that. I haven't seen a response yet on that. Okay. Hmm. You know, maybe if they lease it for a month, they could do it, you know, April to, to May, one month. And then if they have to do it again in the fall. Yeah. That yeah. sounds very, that sounds very reasonable. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm waiting for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also asked the other day about the insurance and he said he was going to talk to either June or. Oh, yes, I, uh, I should be, I, I should contact my, I'll, co I'll contact our insurer directly. I was supposed to do that, I think, after your last meeting and I apologize, I haven't done it. <laughs> it's been a busy time. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a busy, there's no excuses. <laughs> No excuse. Um, but yeah, I can get on that. I, I do appreciate that this year he seemed much more positive about finding a used truck and a much more affordable option. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, again, I sort of go with the high or with the fire. I'm, I'm not sure we need to buy accessory things at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wish, and I mean, I, I won't give up, but I, I, I wish that, you know, we had reached out to Clinton last year to see if they would pitch in on a shared bucket truck and COVID hit or whatever. And, um, and we never, we never heard back. So um, might've been a futile attempt, but that would have been a really, really good opportunity to share, share a truck. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Did anybody talk to Clinton about this? Well, I did, and uh, they seemed so interested, interested at first. Yeah, they seemed interested at first. In fact, the DPW superintendent seemed really interested, and I don't know if it was money issues or COVID or what, but um, I can follow up with the, the town administrator again and uh, see if there's any possibility in the coming year if they'd be interested in doing that. How about Boylston? Do they have it? Boylston actually has their own municipal light department and they have their own bucket truck. We actually tried, um, not for tree work, but we actually tried entering into an agreement with the Boylston municipal light department. Um, for the street lights. For the street lights, for the maintenance, because that's another use, another really legitimate use for a, yes. a bucket truck. Um, yeah. But uh, that's just another, that was, we, I hit another dead end with that one. So, okay. um, I and we had hit a dead end with, um, was it Marlboro or Hudson? Oh, I don't know. I think it was Hudson Light and Power. And they just said, you know, at that point, they they had a bunch of new stuff coming on. They were just out straight. Mm. I like the idea of the uh, I like the idea of the rental. I I, I do. Um, uh, it, we'd still have to ask the insurance questions. Um, we'd have to make sure you know we'd have to ask about safety protocols. Now, Dave um, himself and uh, you know I think his guys are very his crew um, is very very good at um, at tree work. And one of his new, um, one of his newer employees um, actually owned a, a a tree company, and so um, he's a, very experienced. So I, I'm confident. What did he do with his bucket truck? He yeah. gave it to us. It's it, his son is running the his son is running the business now. Oh. <laughs> so I, you know, and that's something. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Contract I'm sure there's out. Not some nepotism hmm. going on. <laughs> Yeah. So I, there are options, but I, I actually do like the thought of, um, of the rental. Uh, the other option that you can check out is a lease. Mm -hmm. Lease. Yeah. A, a lease to own or a, just a long-term. I don't know. That's part of mm -hmm. what 
you get all the numbers and then see what mm -hmm. you have and what works with your numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would like to see is what are they, ex okay, when I look at the spreadsheet, the only one that's done anything right is the uh, police chief. Mm -hmm. By putting in every year, you're going to do a truck. I'd like mm -hmm. to know what other stuff are the other departments instead of seeing great big blank things. Because, you know, do I put it off to another year? Oh, no, I can't do that because this is coming. Right. I can't do that currently. Mm -hmm. Right. Fire had prepared something like that last year, Chief mm -hmm. Larkin, but he was new in the department. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought we'd sort of give him a buy last year. Um, and I'm curious why he didn't sort of re-update that this year. Mm -hmm. Probably just time. Hmm. Or yeah, maybe if with a familiarity, maybe new priorities. Yeah. Um, so can you, for our next meeting, can you find out what kind of roof repairs they've had to do on public safety, other than the ice dams that they had over the dispatch and they totally uh, revamped that? I can try to find that out. Um, okay. well, she should have that information if the department doesn't. She should. Um, Okay. The roof inspection that's happening, I think, on Thursday this week. That's um, the office build offices building, not the public safety building. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's the rubber membrane roof over the um, over the town offices. And yeah, we have we're having issues uh, there. I came in one day. Now it was after a heavy rain, granted, but I came in one day and there were. In, in my own office, I could see that water had come in through the ceiling and down the wall. Oh. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's no, bad. so there was something, something went on there. I don't know. Wow. But they don't that's tend cool. to repair themselves. True. <laughs> no, and, and I don't think, <laughs> well, it was heavily raining should, should be an excuse. <laughs> All right, so I have notes here. I need to uh, find out what roof repairs were done on the public safety complex. I'll, I'll look for the town offices too. Um, I need to contact Maya about the bucket truck issues. Yeah. I need to um, look at uh, bucket truck rental uh, and lease costs. Yeah. Okay. Or terms. Yeah, okay. Um, I can attempt to contact Clinton again just for the heck of it. Well, sometimes it's important to just say you did it so that you can get up and say at town meeting, this yeah. is what I did and this is why I am making this proposal. Okay. People just want to know you've done due diligence with their money. Yeah. Okay. I'll also contact Boylston Municipal Light, but not for the trees. That's going to be, that would strictly be for street lights. We don't okay. have any, do we? We have, what, 62 Eloise? I believe so. How many do we have? Six, I, I remember Eloise telling us once years ago, 60, 62. Street lights? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and those lights are supposed to last eight to ten years. When did they oh, go? Good. Two years ago, three? Yeah. Nineteen. Okay. Wow. And we part of why the electric um, line item keeps going up is we also put in the highway barn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a big one, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a huge one with no solar. Yep. Well, hopefully that'll be next up on the capital plan. That's a <laughs> Something like yeah. that. <laughs> so back to highway, they also asked for a new loader. Yes. Right. Um, 
So talking to my husband, who's a heavy equipment mechanic, among other things, um, he said, it sounds like the loader is done for. Oh, really? Yeah, just the problems that um, Dave talked about, the things that they repaired. Now I can't remember what they are, but um, Troy says it 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 doesn't sound like it has mm. much. Play. It's ominous. Yeah, he, yeah. That's right. another one that's. Um, I wish I had the asset inventory in front of me. I think that one is twenty years old as well. So. Um, yeah. And, and it's very expensive replacement, too. Very expensive. I mean, it, it's not, there's not a cheap way, at least my understanding of the industry is that there's not a cheap way to replace right. it. Mm. That, for the highway, that might go to the top of the line. Mm. Yeah, but, and um, uh, he mentioned trade-in value, didn't he? I thought there was a, he mentioned that there was some sort of a, not, not enough. That, maybe ten grand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th I think he said that he hoped that they would get more money for it if they sold it privately. Privately, yes. Uh -huh. On that munici munici bid. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh. We could see what others are going for on munici bid and and other sites. Yeah. Yeah. It's all a matter of time. Yeah. So the uh, the real wild card then is uh, town office roof, huh? That's um, that would be a big, that would be a big one. What about the? I thought we needed the HVAC. You do. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking roof in addition to HVAC. Oh man. Um. um and it's the oldest roof that we've talked of. Mm. It just doesn't, it won't surprise me that it's a problem. No, it owes us nothing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. And, and just like public safety, you don't want to go putting in the HVAC on an old roof and then right. have to cut it out. Crane it and, out of the way, they said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and the if, thing uh, is, once you cut it, you're introducing potential places for it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if that would be my first choice, hmm? because if your roof's leaking, you're in a bigger problem than a lot of other things. Yeah. I did reach out to, I don't know if I mentioned this already, I did reach out to Kelly Brown uh, to ask her if she knows of any um, funding or rebate programs for the HVAC replacement. I just haven't heard back from her yet, so yeah. I'll keep you posted. And I, isn't she supposed to meet uh, with a, on a Zoom meeting on January yeah. 15 with the Energy Committee? So yes, she'll if, be there. Uh, Capital Planning wants to chime in, I will welcome you. <laughs> you won't chime in for us, will you, Eloise? Well, sometimes people like to hear other than my voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it just shows that it's not just something I am focused on. It's more of a, a general problem. Yeah. If uh, Margaret's there, then she can also chime in. Did Kelly say that uh, they're cutting back on energy grant stuff? She hasn't said any of that. No, she hasn't said that. In fact, I would be very, very surprised if they're cutting back on energy anything. I think they're really, I think they're really focused on the whole climate change issue. Um, so I don't think they'd be cutting back. Then again, I work for the town, not the state, so. <laughs> Yeah, don't but I don't want to make any assumptions and then find out, you know, I cut my nose despite my face. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that um, any other <clears throat> departments other than the big three or four? 
There is nothing from any other departments right now um, as far as capital requests. Uh, again, I would love to try to, and I know there'd be some convincing to do about establishing a public safety stabilization fund, but now, now would be a perfect time to be talking about that, especially given the challenge uh -oh. how dependent we've become on them. Will the public safety departments buy into it? I don't know if they'll buy into it. I, I do believe, um, I do believe the chiefs will understand um, that you can't, you know, it's not sustainable to receive payment spend it all down, have nothing left, and then do it all over again the next year. It's not, it's not sustainable. It, it, there needs to be some sort of, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. before Margaret um, You know off. what I could do? I had, uh-oh, uh-oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. Uh, I just remembered it. No. Oh. oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, you're back. I, know. I have slippers on too. I, I ran out of my. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So in your, in your um, Google drive is the, is the five-year capital plan with the FY22 request worksheet. And so that FY22 request worksheet shows all the newer request and she's frozen again yeah I, so i can't find that what she's talking about has anybody else found it yeah i printed it out because i was having a tr i was having trouble flipping in my computer it just it would just freeze up like that so yeah. if i can um copy it and drop it in the mail for you <laughs> That's so old fashioned of you, Eloise. I understand. On the other hand, um, my daughter was hospitalized for COVID. Oh no, I'm so sorry. She, she was in for four days. She got home yesterday. The rest of her household has tested positive. Right now I'm self quarantining until Thursday. Oh no. My 14th day. Mm. Well, I oh. So glad that everybody's okay. At this point, yep, everybody's, yeah, and it doesn't help that she is asthmatic and that she <laughs> has the brain tumor, so. Oh, and she's been positive? Yeah, yeah. She's, you say something terrible, she raises her hand. <laughs> so when my sister, do we want my our next... Yeah, that's what you said last night. What did yeah. you say, Margaret? My sister had COVID. Um, oh, she, yeah, she wow. was lucky. She, she was down and out for eleven days. Fever wouldn't break, and uh, she couldn't, she couldn't even make her way out of bed. She was just really. But then one day the fever broke, <laughs> just like that. It was weird, very weird. So it's concerning. So when do we want our next meeting? before everybody breaks up yeah i think that we should um when do we anticipate to get that roof um thursday, thursday. Like if meet, so if they meet on thursday we'll get the information thursday or will it take them some time to prep it would take them time um the inspection would happen thursday it would probably take some of them a little time to get the estimate to us okay sometime next year next year yeah <laughs> And that's right around the corner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if we if we met the first Thursday in January, which is like the that'd be the seventh. Um, is that? Do you think that'd give us enough time to get some of that information? I think so. I could ask Dave. I, I'll just ask Dave if they could if they could uh, get us that by then. Or uh, get a summary by then. Yes. Yeah. 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 
All right, um, so I will, I'll go ahead and schedule your meet. What time do you want to meet on the 7th? Uh, let me check my schedule this time before I actually agree. Um, um, Margaret, while I'm looking at my uh, schedule, I'm having trouble finding the um, chart and the spreadsheet and the worksheet on the um, Google Drive. Is okay. There, what is it? I'll like? All right. I'll resend you the link to it. Okay. Okay. Um, and my Thursday, the seventh, I can do anything after 5 PM. So whatever works for everybody else. Well, if you want to do six o'clock again. Sure. Well, Fine with me. good that you can get something on your tummy, you know. <laughs> I like six o'clock meetings. They're good. Okay. I don't mind them. All right. I'll go ahead and schedule the Zoom for six o'clock. Um, I think I actually already have you scheduled on Thursdays. I'll just move it to six o'clock and send you the link, Anna, so you can, okay. or, or um, I'll send everybody the link so you can get it uh, posted on my town government. Okay. okay. All right. And do you just want to say a general discussion for your agenda? Yeah, I think we're still just, I think we're still just discussing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I can do that part of it. Okay. Thank right. You. Okay. okay. Any, right. anything we're not covering that anyone can think of? <laughs> can you think of what we're not thinking of? Anyone? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and adjourn us uh, at 7.04 p.m.